Hello, welcome to another edition of Nick's Projects where I'm doing something truly unique today. Well, I say unique, I've searched thoroughly on Google, on YouTube, I've looked on AliExpress, on eBay, on Amazon, and this product, to my knowledge, does not exist. I am making independent heated pads to be used with outdoor patio furniture. Now we're in lockdown at the moment where well, we've currently gone onto the rule of six with the pandemic in the UK and that means that you're allowed to have friends over for a drink or whatever in the evening um, but a maximum of six people and it has to be outside. Now there are various ways of heating an outdoor space but none of them really do it for me and I know this because friends we've gone around to friends houses and they have fire pits chimneys outdoor patio heaters all of these things and none of them are really that effective so I think if you can bring the heat to the individual people around the table then that's really going to work and I'm going to show you my plan on how to do it in a moment but first let's talk about some of those other things so I've got a friend who's got a chimney the problem with chimneys is first of all they get very very hot to the point I've seen one of them crack in the past that's fine if you're sat round and you're huddled round in the summer, but of course the smoke really makes your clothes smell, unfortunately, and if you've got kids or pets around, or if you've even got people that have had too many drinks, you touch that chimney, you're going to stick to it. Fire pits offer much the same problem. Like a chimney, they're also a real nightmare to clean up the next morning, and they're not cheap. They're not cheap to buy the wood to fuel them and all the rest of it. So I didn't want to do that. And also I wanted a solution where you could have six people enjoying a meal around a table and then a few drinks before and after, whatever. I wanted a seated solution. So the next thing you can get is one of these. It's like a thing that goes around the, the, the stem on your parasol and it projects heat down. Sounds great, doesn't it? Well, these things are well over 200 quid for the good ones. And well, we all know that heat rises. So if you're projecting heat down, it's only gonna be so effective. So you're gonna end up with people with really hot faces under a red glow as well, which isn't really what you want. Yeah, I just didn't like the size of the thing. I thought it was too big, too bulky. It ruined the look of the patio furniture. Didn't like that. The other thing you can get, you see outside pubs, which is like a, a, a heated wall mounted thing, or you get them on stands, um, or you can get the gas ones where they, they kind of project heat out. Again, great if you're really close to them, but not really a brilliant solution if you wanted to be seated around a table. Now, I've got the parasol up today because it isn't the nicest day. It's a bit rainy. Um, so bear with us. I wanted to show you my plan. So what I'm going to do is each of these seats will have a heated pad. Actually, before I go there, I'm going to tell you one other thing. I thought I had this solved. Last week we had some friends around, I said, this is simple, all I need to do is, it's dry, there was no rain forecast, I'll stick a couple of fan heaters under the table, heat rises, we'll all have hot feet and it'll keep us all warm. Stupidly, I used an extension reel and can you see that? It got so hot where it wasn't fully unfurled, this extension reel, that the wire melted this caused the whole house electrics to go at about 10 o'clock at night. It was an absolute nightmare. So don't use fan heaters. Don't use fan heaters because they're 2000 watts, like the halogen heaters that you can get for your parasol. My solution for six seats will use just 600 watts and will deliver heat directly to the individual. Can't believe this doesn't exist. In fact, I'm going to declare my intellectual property on this idea right now because I think it's such a good one. Um, so what I'm going to do is this. These are machine washable heated pads. They're not huge, but they're just big enough. Now you can see they're kind of soft, they're fairly small, they're perfectly sized to stick on outdoor furniture. So you can stick that like that, that will heat your lower back and your bum really nicely. But the problem I thought is going to be this control. So you've got a six setting control on this, which you don't want dangling around your feet. You certainly wouldn't want six plugs going into an extension on the floor. So my idea is this. I'm going to have these independently connected with independent sockets to spaces on the table just here. So each person can get in and out comfortably. They've got their own heat control and it just plugs in. So to do that, I'm going to cut this wire shorter. I'm going to add these weatherproof little joiner sockets. These are the ones that you use to extend your lawnmower. Really simple, really safe. When that's connected, you imagine this is going to hang down under the table like this. So it's going to be protected from the elements when it's not in use. And then when you want to use them, you simply connect your individual blankets up with one of these. 
You'll see more of this as the video goes on. These will then be connected, all six, going in with the wire. I'll explain all of the specification of the wires and the various pieces I've used as we go. They'll be fed into this IP55 socket, which will be mounted underneath the table like this. A single wire will then come out of this IP55 junction box and will feed into one of these, which is a simple waterproof power extension lead, right? So this is how that's gonna work. It will also give me three additional sockets for things like a Bluetooth speaker, a mobile phone charger, so we can run music without it running out. And actually this set came with a little Velcro pit, um, a Velcro strip, which I'm gonna use with this. So this can all be detached at the end of the summer, or if you're facing some really bad weather. The wires too are only gonna be held in place with this little set of hooks. Now I think I'm going to use just the little ones which are perfectly sized just to slip the cable into um, so the cables there's going to be nothing hanging around your feet while you're sat there it's going to be nice and safe everyone has a heater and it's going to be working beautifully so I've bought six of these pads they're fairly inexpensive this is way cheaper than buying one of those uh, halogen heaters up here um, some of them even come with these funny little belts that connect to the pad so you can strap it around your torso or whatever I don't think we'll be using those in practice of course, these are designed for people with arthritis or just to lay over your lap, etc. But where they're machine washable, I'm pretty much guaranteed that these are pretty water resistant and there's no damage that's gonna come from getting these wet. What you obviously don't wanna do is leave these just sat outside. You must take these in every time you use them. And as I've said from the top, this is very much a DIY prototype. These are not designed for use outside. These sockets, the IP55 junction, those wires could be left in place, but after you've had your evening of you know, entertainment, you would need to take in these blankets and their controllers because they're not to be left outside. So this is my plan. We're gonna build it. We're gonna test it. I'm gonna get some friends over next week. And we're gonna have a few drinks. We're gonna really see if this method works. I've got a feeling it will. I've sat out here with one under my bum and it was very warm. So. Fingers crossed, welcome again to Nick's Projects. And as always, all of these things, even down to the tools, will be linked in the description if you want to do the same project yourself. This is gonna be absolutely awesome. Well, I've taken down the parasol just to give us a bit more light for filming. So uh, that's gonna be up and down throughout the whole of this uh, video. So excuse the continuity errors. Um, right, I've got the pad actually on the first seat here. I'm gonna have to do this for all six seats. The purpose of this is really simply, I just need to measure where I'm gonna chop the wire and attach these new connectors. Because of course, what I don't want is a UK plug on there still. Um, I've actually already done this one. I've made that little mark with a Sharpie um, because effectively these connectors connectors are going to dangle down next to each seat about here. I'm going to always fit them on the left hand side if I can just so the blankets can be interchanged between the seats and you don't have to have certain blankets for certain seats blah de blah. Um, that's going to fit on like that. This connector will hang down. Obviously when it comes to the connector the male connector needs to be attached to this because you certainly don't want live gold pins exposed and the um, recessed connectors will hang down. So that's the first job. I've got six of these blankets. I'm going to chop the wire and I'm going to fit these connectors on. Okay, so really simple. We'll speed up parts of this process, otherwise it'll be really boring. I've got my control here and there's my mark from being outside on the table. These are some great wire cutters. We've linked to these in the description. I start just cutting that, get rid of this. The next thing is this tool, which is really brilliant for simply, or well you move this piece up, simply stripping the wires. Let's pull this apart. We want this side, not this one. Make sure you thread this onto the wire before you do any wiring, otherwise you'll hate yourself for forgetting. Undo these two here loosely, which is your live and your negative, live and neutral, sorry, and completely undo and loosen so you can fold this back. Next we're going to go here. You can see it's just nicked there and there, so I'm going to take it back a little bit further.
You'll notice with these there is no earth connection on these wires, which was a surprise to me, so they must be a double insulated product. But it doesn't matter, I'll still run an earth to the other side of the connector for safety. Reattach the wire clamp and tighten it up. Give it a good tug, check that's firm. Perfect. And that's it. Back outside again now, it's just starting to rain and it is really cold, <laughs> so we definitely need these seat pads. This is the junction box, the IP55 junction box I'm going to mount on the underside of the table this way round. Inside the junction box, really simply, a little chock block, um, but quite a chunky one because I'm going to put all six cables from the six seat pads into here and then on the other side will of course be the cable going out to a single plug socket. That's going to go in there, that just clips in. So that will be on the underside of the table and I've been under the table and this is the exact location. Now if you get one of these boxes, bear in mind you've got two ports on three sides and one port on one. Because of my layout, I am going to put it that way round. So I've got one going to that seat, two going to either seat either side, one going to that seat and the final one for the power that is actually going to be connected just underneath. This is the cable. I've already put one uh, female connector on it just to give me a really good idea of how long I need the cable to be. And the, and the task now is really just making sure that the wires are pretty exactly as long as I need them to be. So I'm just simply going in, cutting each strand to fit with the box in that location. And then when I attach it underneath, of course, with those little hooks, which I showed you earlier, that should do the job quite beautifully. So I'm gonna connect up all of these wires, cut them all to the right length, then I'll make the joins in the warmth, and then I'll come back out and fit this box under the table, and we're nearly good to go at that point. Okay, so now I'm gonna to get to this connection. That's coming from the power that will be coming from under the table, right through to these controllers and they just detach like this. I'm gonna show you how to attach these, but before we go there, let's talk about this cable. This is a three core 0.75 millimeter cable. That's capable of carrying six amps. Now, each of these units are 100 watts. So I know that 100 watts at 240 volts, which is the maximum voltage ca capable, is under half an amp of power draw, okay? So I know that six of these is gonna be just three amps. These connectors are 10 amps, the cable is six amps, so plenty of headroom. This is the right tool for the job. Okay, so that aside, let's get on with this. Again, using my lovely wire stripper. In fact, I'm gonna go a bit further down. There's the three cores. Now, of course, there's only two cables running the other side of this connector, but I'm still gonna run an earth right the way to that connector because in the future, well, I may want to put something else on these uh, adapters. It's perfectly possible. These are strange the way these ones work, the female side. You undo the screw as before. And then to get this out, you have to push your screwdriver through inside and then it pops out like that. Don't forget to put this on first, easily done. We're going to remove one side, pretty loose to be honest, almost so it's falling off because you've got to get a big cable in there. Right, next we're going to loosen these three off and of course because it's opposite to the other, the live and the neutral are reversed left to right because of course it has to plug in and it's marked on here anyway, you can see live is on the right hand side. Actually you can use this little guide, can be quite useful. So you, you, can, you, know, you can adjust it to different lengths so you always get a consistent strip on the wires. Now with these ones, you need to make sure you don't go too hard with them because of course you've got to get the probes in from the other side. So shallow is fine that's why i've doubled back the wire onto the sleeve that's the live connection you now have to put the clamp on and tighten it up evenly easier said than done these are fiddly i won't lie to you 
each one will take you about five minutes. But when it's done, it's done. And really make sure this cable is properly clamped because if you don't do it, your guests will probably pull it from the cable. So you want to make sure it's secure. That's nicely held in there. All those connections are clean. Yep. It's just got to be forced in that hole. There we go. Okay, so the female connectors, all six are now attached to those various lengths of wire that I've measured out, and they've all been stripped and are ready to be fitted to the junction box on the other side. The junction, bo the junction box, I've taken that Velcro that came with the waterproof um, uh, extension enclosure, and I've just cut it to fit the back of this. Now, what I'm going to do is staple gun the reverse of the, the hook and loop Velcro to the underside of the table because I know that stuff can fall off. But it doesn't need to bear a lot of weight because these little hooks are going to be supporting all the wires running in from every side. So it's really just to hold it in place um, but so it can be removed at the end of the season or if we're facing some really nasty weather. So that's ready to go. The next thing I need to do now is get all of the wires in through these grommets on the side here which are kind of soft rubbery patches. Now to do that I've taken a piece of wire and cut it at an angle to create a point that will be exactly the right size. I'm going to make a hole with a braddle and then force through and that comes into that space like that. Now I can remove that and poke through the wires that I've prepared and that hole is now ready. I now need to do that with all six cables plus the seventh plug cable. So you can see I've staple guns with some stainless steel staples that Velcro patch. I've put the fluffy side on the table and now I can just offer this up and hopefully it will be just enough to hold it in place. Yep. Yeah. Now of course once the script once those little hooks are in that will help it. So all of these wires are here now and I'll be able to put the chock block in in just a second. But before I do that, I want to make sure all the tails are exactly the right length um, as I offer it up to all the, the various seating points around the table. So I'm just using a simple braddle to make a pilot hole and then using these tiny little hooks, which will be in the description, which are just the right size. They're rubber coated, so they're not going to rust. You can hold those in nice and tight and then the cable will sit in those all the way along and can easily be detached at the end of the season. Okay so it's not pretty but you can see in here I've got my positive negative and my earth. I've put um, some electrical tape over the, um, the live and the, the earth there. I'm just leaving the neutral on top and I just need to cap that off now but you can see all of my hooks are in and they're holding it nicely. You can see here they're all positioned exactly where I want them, those wires. Um, so when people sit down they'll be able to easily grab a connector just by where they're sitting and plug in their independent heaters. That's all working. Um, next job now is just to put the plug on it, um, put the cap on that box and give it a test. Okay so it's all in and it works. You could see those uh, wire connections I made in that little IP55 box. You can see it's starting to rain now and yes they're slightly damp to the touch and no one's been electrocuted yet. They work absolutely brilliantly. I just wanted to show you under the table here. I didn't bother filming this because it's so simple. I just screwed this little box down it's a really simple waterproof box with a couple of connections in there. You can plug in whatever you like and they come out of these little holes at the side here which is cool um, and obviously yes it might get kicked by a foot down there so it keeps it nice and safe and out of the way um, and these work absolutely brilliantly you can just have these hanging down each individual person has got their got their own control and I can tell you sitting on this even in the damp with a little bit of rain the, the protection from the parasol it really does. It sends shivers through your spine. It is, it's a really lovely, warm, if not hot seat. The moment you turn these things on, literally within a minute, you can feel the heat coming up through. 
it's working absolutely brilliantly. You can see that the shorter tails to the heating pads work really nicely. This is 100% a project worth doing. Um, it's March in the UK here and it's, it's quite chilly, um, but having that heat underneath is really gonna extend the season using this garden. And especially at the moment with the rule of six, you're only allowed a maximum of six people in your house or, or outside in your garden and they have to be uh, outside. This is, this is really gonna make a difference. And outside of the pandemic, how lovely that we'll be able to come here on those autumn sunny days and sit in the garden, nice and warm for a cup of tea or a few drinks. Do it. I highly recommend this project. And uh, yeah, I'll let you know how I get on when we have some friends over this week. They'll be pleasantly surprised by this new installation, I'm sure. So that's it from this edition of Nick's Projects. Um, as always, if we can, we will place links to all of the items, the tools and the materials we used in the description. And please do let me know in your comments whether you've decided to do something similar and how you've got on. But as I said before, 100% recommend this. It's a real game changer for colder days in the garden. <laughs>